Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to the second week of Fall Food Friday. If you don't know what Fall Food Friday is, it is a collab that's being hosted by Fallon over at Moss Family TV and we're doing a total of four weeks. Anyone can join in and I will have the link of the playlist down below and also Fallon's channel. So this week I'm going to be sharing with you a slow cooker soup and also a pumpkin dessert. So come check out what I made. Okay friends, let's start this week's Fall Food Friday with dessert first. Today I'm gonna to be making sugar cookie pumpkin cream tarts and we are gonna be using store-bought sugar cookie dough. And it was nice they had the pack today that I picked up with, they're all individual, the, the little individual cookies in there. Sometimes they don't have this and I have to get the whole tube and cut it up and, and roll everything out. So this is much easier. And back here, I'll show you what we're gonna use for the filling real quick. We have pumpkin pie spice. I have a block of cream cheese that's softening, one 15 ounce can of the pure pumpkin. I have vanilla extract. I have one cup of powdered sugar, and then also we're gonna be adding some Cool Whip. So first, we're gonna get started by making the tarts. So I'm gonna start by taking these cookies and I'm not just gonna put them in the cupcake tin. I am gonna roll them up. That's just how I've always done this. I don't know if you can just, if it'll come out the same if I just put the little cookie in there, but since I've always done it this way and it works out really well, I'm just gonna do what I know works. So I'm gonna roll all these up. I'm gonna put them in the oven. The oven is preheated at 350 and this takes about 15 minutes usually to cook because you want them to get a little bit brown around the edges. What I do after about 10 minutes, I take a toothpick and poke a hole in each one the same way as if you were testing a cake to see if it was done. But the reason for this is because you kind of want to deflate it because after it's in these cups, it starts to rise a little bit and looks almost like a cupcake and you want to get it down because when we put the filling in, you want to have a nice indentation for the pumpkin cream filling. So I'm going to keep rolling these. I'm going to get them in the oven and I'll show you how they look when they come out. Now that they're out of the oven, I'm just using the back of a measuring spoon to push them down to make a little bit of a bigger indentation. I did poke them all with a toothpick at the 10 minute mark and they did take the full 15 minutes to cook. So I'm gonna keep doing this, then I'm going to get them on a cooling rack and we are gonna start on our filling. And this is how they should look after you've pushed them all down. To start the filling, you're gonna be using one eight ounce block of cream cheese that you've softened. You have to use your hand mixer or stand mixer for this. You really can't do it by hand. It has to be beaten until it's really creamy. Once you have it to that consistency, you're going to add in your one can of pumpkin, a teaspoon and a half of your pumpkin spice, and also one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And I had exactly one teaspoon in that bottle. I didn't have to open the other one. We're going to get this mixed up and then we're going to start adding in our powdered sugar. You want it to look about like this before you start adding in the sugar, and you're gonna to wanna to add your powdered sugar gradually. So I'm adding maybe half to three quarters to start. I'm gonna give that a good mix, and then I'm gonna continue adding it and getting it all mixed up, and then it's going to be time to fold in our Cool Whip. Now for the Cool Whip, we're gonna add that in, and this part we are gonna mix by hand. You're just gonna fold it in. I did taste the filling before I started adding the Cool Whip. I thought there was plenty of sugar. If you think you need more, you can always add more powdered sugar, but with the pumpkin spice flavor in there, I don't think you need that much more added sugar. It tasted fine to me with the one cup. So we're gonna get this all mixed up and then we're gonna start filling our tarts. Now it's time to fill the tart shells. I've taken one out of the paper to show you how it looks. 
it looks it doesn't look like cupcake at all it looks like a little tart shell and that's why I left it in for the whole 15 minutes because I like it to have a little bit of a crunch on the edges and on the outside and the inside you can see where it's pushed down it's a little bit chewy in the middle so it's kind of like a crunchy cookie on the outside and chewy in the middle so we're going to get these all filled up this recipe really makes a lot of filling I ended up making a whole nother batch of these. I used the other 12 sugar cookies that came in the package. Originally, I was gonna put it in a graham cracker pie crust, but I didn't have an extra one. So I just did more of the cookies and I ended up having just a little bit left over. So I did put it in the freezer to see if it freezes well. That way I know for next time. This is how I stored them. I have a couple of these cake pans that have a nice plastic lid. I did eat one of them and I put a little more whipped cream on top. It's not necessary. There's plenty of cream in the filling, but if you want to add a little whipped cream, you can also do that. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this recipe and now it's time to make some soup. Now we're going to make some bacon cheeseburger soup in the crock pot. In my pan, I have two pounds of ground meat. I've seasoned it with salt, pepper, and garlic powder. I'm gonna completely brown it and drain it before I put it in the pot. Over here are the things we're going to be adding. I have just under three cups of potatoes. I have a small onion, half a bag of baby carrots that I've diced up. I have three stalks of celery, some minced garlic. In the back there, I have two cups of water that I've added three tablespoons of better than bouillon to, and I'm also going to add four more cups of water. I did use six cups liquid total in this recipe. Now that I have all the ingredients in here, I'm going to set it on low, and this did take seven hours to cook in my crock pot, which surprised me a little bit because my crock pot tends to cook very quickly, but it did take seven hours. At the four hour mark, I added half a block of cream cheese, about four ounces, and I also did a cornstarch slurry with three tablespoons of cornstarch and three tablespoons of water. I forgot to record that and I remembered a few minutes later. So here I am just giving it a stir to show you guys what it looks like after four hours. I then covered it for another hour and a half and at the five and a half hour mark is when I added my cheese and my bacon. Here's my bacon. I cooked about seven strips of bacon. I made them pretty crispy, so I drained those really well. I got them into the pot. If you don't have bacon, you could probably use bacon bits. I think it would be just as fine. And then I added one eight ounce package of sharp cheddar cheese, and I also had a half left. So I added one and a half bags. So I added about 12 ounces of cheese. I gave that a good stir. Again, this was at the five and a half hour mark for me. I covered it and I let it go for another hour and a half. I checked it at seven hours and it was done. And after seven hours, here's what we have. I added a little bit more cheese on top. I served it with some garlic bread. I had a loaf of leftover Italian bread, so I just made a quick garlic bread. This was so good. It was so easy. It's a perfect fall food. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here and you haven't subscribed, please do. I'd love to have you around. And thanks to Fallon for hosting this again. And I can't wait to see everybody else's awesome recipes. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.